Jesus is passing this way. Yeah, this way. This way. Jesus is passing. This way. He's passing. This way. Right now. Jesus is passing this way, this way, oh, this way, he's passing this way right now. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this day for such a wonderful day. It is the work of the hands you have created that we should be glad and rejoice in it. Therefore, we are glad and we will rejoice. Thank you that we still live and move and have our being in day. Thank you, thank you for the breath of life that we still can breathe and blood still continue to circulate up and down in our bodies. Thank you, thank you. In the name of Jesus. We pray that you will help us to understand our word this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. It is by the grace of God we have come to a moment such as this. In times like this, I am always grateful. Always happy. And I am reminded of the grace of God upon us. Because it is by grace we live and move and have our being. It is by grace we are still alive this day. Many do not realize how the hand of the Almighty God has been merciful. How he has shown his grace, his favor, his mercy upon us. We went down the route that others went and did not return. But he has been merciful on us. We thank our God in the name of Jesus. The God whose name is Elohim. The God whose name is Yahweh, the God who is the Holy God. He is our Holy Father and we thank Him. We give Him grace. This morning, I want us to share a short passage in the Bible. In the in the book, in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 9, verse 51, and I read, the Bible says, as the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem, and he sent messengers on ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him, because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then he and his disciples went to another village. The Gospel of Luke actually sets out at this time to tell us that Jesus, Jesus' time on earth was drawing to a close. So after all the things that has taken place before, before chapter 9, and even before verse 51 of chapter 9 of the book of Luke, 
the Bible is now actually telling us that there is a new direction. Jesus has set out to go to Jerusalem where he knew that he was going to die an excruciating death to save all mankind for the purpose of his being on earth is to save the lost. So we see here that the book of Luke is actually telling, and, be, and be, before this, in chapter, in the same ch chapter, when you read from the verse 44, Jesus had actually told his disciples that he's going to Jerusalem and he was going to die. Because he was going to basically die. But in, in verse 51 onwards, Jesus was actually talking now about the fact that he has set his face to go to Jerusalem. A man needs to set his face to decide that this is the direction I want to go. So the Bible says, we must actually set our face to believe that God is, and then he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When we come to the things of the spiritual, things that you, you believe in, yet you haven't seen, before you begin to see the signs of what you haven't seen in you, to build up your belief system, you need to actually have the initial seed of belief in you that he is, and he is the rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. So he set his face to go to Jerusalem. In this season, many are, are the things we hear. It is getting to Easter. But the Easter story started when Jesus said, I have set my face to go to Jerusalem. And that is where I was going to die, to save all mankind. So in chapter 9 of the book of Luke, sets out the picture to us. Jesus, after beginning his ministry and having done a lot, <clears throat> whilst there was transfigured, uh, uh, he, had, he had been healing people. He had, he had attended a wedding. He, he's done a whole lot of things. He's preached. He's preached about, about the requirements of the kingdom. If you read the chapter 6, uh, chapter 7, and, and, and all the things that has been happening around where he had actually come from. Because when he started his ministry from home and they did not accept him because they knew him that nothing good comes from where he was born. But they were only looking at him because they saw him as a young boy where he was. But they didn't actually know that he wasn't born there. He was taken there. So the the the, the truth was hidden from them. They actually thought that anybody born where he was found cannot be the savior of the world because the scripture says that no savior comes from where he was. Where you are, there might be no hope. There might be no, no salvation there. But I tell you today that Jesus has set his face to come through where you are. Because where he goes, he carries the grace, the anointing, the power, the authority that is able to change and make things the way they are supposed to be in the sight of God. So the town where it's been declared that you cannot have a prophet. A prophet does not come from where you are. Nobody prospers in the family you find yourself. Not just in monetary, not just in monetary terms. Prosperity is not only about money. Nobody does well. Nobody travels and do, and do well. Nobody does well at home. Nobody does well in, in all aspects of life. You will be able to. Nobody does well as a Christian, you will break that 
obstacle because when Jesus set his face to go, the Bible says that he he sent his disciples to a Samaritan village, but that village they did not accept him, so they went to another village. Jesus has come to you this day. Jesus has come to you some time back. How are you accepting him? How are you receiving him? How are you going by him? Are you still following the dictates of this life and the things that are in it? We all have shortcomings. But that is the reason why Jesus died. That he will die. That will no more be our righteousness. But it will be his righteousness that is imputed into us. We don't go out there trying to fish out for wrongs in our lives. For us to commit wrongs against the gospel. Against Jesus Christ. Because he says that if you love me, you will obey my commandments. But we stay in him and we do our, our, our bit. For God, for God, who came on earth in the form of a human being, as a savior to save us, knows your shortcoming. So David says that God should remember him. That he's just sand. You are made up of sand. That God has imputed in you. He breathed in you the breath of life. That's why we can all breathe. But our souls must also be redeemed. Our souls must also become living souls. So he says that at the beginning of creation, he said he created man in his image. He created him from the earth, from the clay, from the sand. Then he made a very important statement. He did not say that he became a living body, but he said he became a living soul. It is this living soul that Christ resurrects in earth. Christ will come into you and he will resurrect that initial living soul, the intention of God and why he created you. To be a living soul. Now he is passing the way. Where you are. If you need a refresher. If you need a new awakening. If you need Jesus. In your life again. If you need Jesus. To start. With, with you. Over. To start with you. By turning a new leaf. This day. The Bible says that he set his face to go to Jerusalem. Jesus has set his face to come to your home. He has set his face to come to you this day. He has set his face to come to you where you are. Because he says when you, went through, when you go through the fire, he will be with you. When you go through the waters, they will not take you away. Even the fire, when it burns around you, the scent of smoke will not be smell in your clothes because he is with you. When you go through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil because Jesus will walk with you. For he has set his face towards you and where you are. Because when he comes into your situation, when he comes to where you are, it will not matter the description that has been used against you. Because where he started his ministry from and where he is going are two different places. He wasn't born in those two areas, but he started from that area and he was going to end in a place where the scripture also has said that that is where all the prophets are killed. So he, he warned them. If we continue to read in the chapters ahead, he warned them when he was actually getting to closer to Jerusalem and on the edge of it and seeing see the city without any hope, he cried. He cried. He warned them. He said a whole lot of things because he, he was in anguish that they were going to kill him and he wanted to reveal himself to them. Even the same scripture that has said that 
No prophet was coming from where he was. You could see Jesus trying to reveal himself in his last in, in his last days on earth. From his journey in chapter 9 of Luke, if you check the chronology, many things began to happen. They started walking. Because it was a walking journey, it takes them a long time to get to Jerusalem. But it started when he set his face towards Jerusalem. Beloved, where have you set your face towards this year? It's your face against Christ. Are you headed in a direction that you yourself, you feel uncomfortable about? Are you in a situation that you see that here I am, but I don't feel God in these situations? Jesus has set his face towards you. Because where he was taken after his birth isn't a place where a prophet can come from. But because he grew up there, they tag him as being someone that cannot be a prophet of God. That cannot be the son of God. Because the, the readers and the interpreters and the academia, those that were knowledgeable at the time, that knew the law, they wrote him off because he was born somewhere. Were you born in a place that is not recognized? That the people around you look down upon you. Jesus is coming. Jesus is setting his face towards you. This time, not as someone that is going to the cross. But this time, as someone that died, was, well, was buried, and the third day arose. And now he sits on the right, right hand side of authority. He holds the power, the authority to change your situation. It does not matter how long you have become a Christian, how long you have heard about him. Today, the regions where the Samaritans were, they, they, they also heard they also heard about someone that has come and was pre preaching around where they are. But they still closed up their boundaries that they didn't want him. We don't want you in our hearts. We don't want you in our matters. The Bible says that those that forsake their God, they forfeit the grace that could have been theirs. Let us hold unto him for he is our only hope he is our only hope you see the bible when the Israelites were out of Egypt when you read this story of the Exodus one important thing that he told them was that if they will follow his word and they will obey his commandments then they will, they will become royals. So you see, we will become royals because our father is a king. And if you compare the, even the earthly royalty and those, and those that, that, that live in, in palaces, you see, you see how people yearn to be like one of them. They yearn to see the smiles they see on their faces on their faces as well but i tell you when you come to christ people may see you the way they see you but god turns you into a royal priesthood he said if they will obey his word and they will, they will follow him they will be they will become a royal priesthood we are being called into royalty. And Jesus has set his face in his day towards Jerusalem. Today he has set his face towards you. What do you want to say to him?
Are you receiving him? Are you staying with him? Are you abiding with him? Are you receiving him fully? Are you in his grace? Because the Bible says that we should test ourselves if we are still in the grace. It is not about how long we have known Christ. Because the man on the cross did not know Christ that long. But he knew at that moment in his heart that this one hasn't committed any crime. We are here with him on the cross. But the road they took to the cross is different from the road this Son of God has come to be on the cross. Therefore he said, when you go into that kingdom, remember me. Let us set our face and go and meet Jesus Christ. Let us set our face and open our hearts that he will indwell us and fill us. Because he says that if we believe in him and we obey his commandments, he will come with his father, with our father. He will come in us and dwell in us and reveal himself unto us. So the Bible says that he set his face to go to them. He came on earth to save. He came into his own. By his own rejected him. Therefore, to us who were outside of the gates, who believed in him, whether in the gate, outside the gate, or on the gate, he said he gave them the power to become the sons of God. So we can become co heirs with him in the kingdom. So the kingdom of God has come to us and it is in our hearts. If Christ will live in us and take control over our body, soul and spirit. If the Holy Ghost will lead us, if our ears will be open to him, our eyes will be open to him and our mouth and our tongue will be directed by him. We, we will set our face actually towards the heavenly goal where Christ has come to save us. May the Lord help us. May he be with us. Abide under his anointing. Abide under his control. Just stay in the arms of Jesus and thou shall be fully whole. Abide under his anointing. Abide under his control. May the Lord bless us. May he take control over us. May he lead us as we journey through the days ahead into the Easter weekend. God bless you. God be with you. And may his shine, and may his eyes shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. Shalom.